following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Arcanum number 12, the Apostolate. Finally, we are arriving at the Arcanum of the Apostolate that teaches that in order to be an apostle, we have to be patient and uh, tolerant and uh, really tolerance is one of the virtues that we need to develop in order to walk on the path especially with this arcanum which is related with a great work the great work that everyone to everyone has to perform which is the self-realization of the being that is precisely the goal the objective of life this is why we are here in this universe this is why we exist only for the self-realization of the being because the being wants to know himself remember that the letter Lamed that is in the bottom or related to this arcanum is that letter related with that phrase which is Lev Mevin that, which is translated as a heart that understands knowledge. Some Kabbalists state that Mevin also is related to that Supreme Master, which is obviously Keter. If we talk about the Supreme Master related with knowledge, with wisdom, we always arrive at Keter. As you know, Keter is the first Sephira of the Tree of Life. It's related with the letter Yod. And that's precisely the letter on top of the letter Lamed, which, which when it stands down to the bottom of the letter Kaf, makes a Vav, the letter Vav, which forms a tower in the air above the head 
And this is something very significant because we have to study related with this man that is hanging here in the, uh, between the two columns of and his foot is tied to that cross in the middle of the circle and above it we have the symbol of the lion, Arie, which reminds us of the Aryan race. Remember that Arie is lion in Hebrew, but Arie is also a word or a sound associated with the sign of Aries fire and Leo is also a sign of fire and the Aryan race which is also associated with this word Arie lion is a race that is ruled by Samael which is the genie of fire When we pronounce the conjuration of the fire, we always invoke three genii. Samael, which is the genie of fire, related with the sign of Aries. Mikael, which is the genie of the fire related with the sign of Leo. And uh, Anael, which is the prince of the astral light, which is fire, the astral force. In order to understand that, we have to do it through fire. Fire is really that very essence of God. That's why you see that this man that is hanged there is hanged from the cross. That cross, of course, is a symbol of a sexual act because the cross is always phallic. The horizontal line is feminine and the vertical line is masculine. But here, the cross inside a circle is showing us very clear four triangles. And when we point at four triangles, we, walk, we, we, we go directly into the tree of life. Every quadrant of this uh, circle is a triangle formed by a line that is curved and the other two lines which are straight forming a triangle. So therefore we find here in the circle one, two, three, four triangles. These indicate the relationship of the cross in the circle or we will say the quadrature of the circle, which is symbolized in the great work that every single soul had to perform in order to achieve perfection. The three triangles, as I said, are related with the tree of life. The first triangle is Keter Chochma Bina, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, related with uh, Trimurti, the Logos, that, that, that we call the Glorian, Christ, the manifested Christ in the three primary forces of the universe, positive, 
negative and neutral. And the other triangle below is a triangle related with a monad, Hesed, Geburah, and Tifereth, which is a monad. That monad is the son of the Glorian, the child of the Glorian, the child of the father. That child of God is other, another trio, which is the spirit, divine soul, and human soul. That's why when in Kabbalah we point at the son, the child, sometimes we point at Hesed, sometimes at Geburah, and sometimes at Tifereth, because the three are one, three Murti. And this is how we have to understand the relationship of these three with the, ch with the child. Because it's written that the second aspect of the first triangle, which is Keter Chokmah Bina, which in this case is Chokmah, incarnates in the second triangle in Tifereth. But is related to Geburah and is related to Hesed in different aspects in the initiation that we are going to explain little by little in the course of these lectures. And the third triangle is Netzah, Hod, and Yesod. Netzah is the mind, Hod is the astral body or emotional body, and Yesod, the vital body. Below this last triangle, is Malkut, which is a fallen Sephira. A fallen Sephira that we also are going to explain how it falls. Falls from where? From, from Yesod. Because Yesod and Malkut should be one in the self-realized master. So we talk here about three, three triangles. So what is the fourth? What is the fourth? We are the four. Or in other words, the fourth triangle is that that we call the Ser Ampin or Sawir Ampin. When somebody comes self-realized, then it's because he or she perform in himself or herself the number 12 meaning the 12 sephiroth are self-realized within. These 12 sephiroth are the 10 sephiroth and they are two unknown that we have to perform in each one of us in order to enter in the 13, which is the absolute, as a self-realized master. So, the three or the fourth triangle is hand here, is this man, because the three primary forces, whether related with the first, second, or third triangle, are always related with the three brains that we have the intellectual brain, which is directly related with the first triangle, with the second and the third. When we study Gnostic psychology, we study how these three brains are related with the three triangles of the tree of life, and how through initiation we had to develop them because that is the objective of the initiation to self-realize the tree of life within the three brains. The emotional brain, which is related to the emotional center, the motor instinctual sexual center, and the intellectual center. These are the three brains in the human being. But you see here, for instance, the triangle which is related to the human being, 
is below the cross. Because this human being is making the cross with his legs. And a triangle with his arms, which are directly related with the three brains. Which I repeat, are the intellectual brain, the emotional brain, and the instinctual sexual brain. But these three brains are directly related with the head. Because remember that the head is related with the first triangle of the tree of life, Keter, Choma, and Bina. We always state that in the, in the brain, we have the three atoms, heavenly atoms, spiritual atoms. When we say atoms, we are not talking about material atoms, but spiritual forces which are placed in the head of every single human being. The atom of Keter, which is the father, is here between the eyebrows. And that's the atom directly related with the breath, respiration. Then we have the atom of Chokhmah, which is called the sun. And that's precisely located in the pituitary gland. And then we have the atom of the Holy Spirit, Bina, located in the pineal gland. So you see how these three primary forces are located in the head. And how they are has to control, of course, the three brains. Those three primary forces have to self-realize themselves in the human being in order to acquire control of the three brains. Because in the way in which humans are in this day and age, in the whole planet, they are in the way that sex is controlling the three primary forces. Sex is controlling their three brains. That's how you find here in this uh, symbol of the man, the cross above the triangle. This symbol should be inverted. The triangle must and should be always above the cross. This, this is why there are many symbols in different religions that when you find the cross above the triangle is something negative. Because if you remember in the way of the cross, which is symbolized and shown very clear by Jesus of Nazareth 2,000 years ago, he carries the cross on his shoulders, not on his head. The black magicians carry the cross on their heads because they are controlled by their sexual force. The white magicians control the cross. They take the cross in their arms and hands and manage the cross. And it's crucified on the cross because through the cross is how we perform the great work that is shown here in this card. That's why also this man has only one foot hanged that symbol, meaning that we had to walk on the path of the self-realization with our feet up there in heaven, not on the earth. Why? Because that's precisely what the letter Lamed is showing us. Many Kabbalists always state 
that the letter Yod in the different letters of the alphabet is pointing at the foot, which is true. But we have to understand that that foot is related with the kingdom of Malkut. Because if you see the tree of life, you will see that Malkut is related with Malkut in the imaginary man behind the tree of life. That's why in the different parts of the Bible or in Kabbalistic books is written that the feet, for instance, of the Christ of Revelation, they are showing that it's like a burning brass. His feet were like burning brass. That's showing us something hidden within their feet, which is Malkut. Meaning that we had to perform some alloy in the physical plane. When we see the feet or the foot in this place tied to heaven, meaning that we should work in our sexual force with our foot or our yod in this case, which is clearly the sexual force to heaven to do the transformation because if that foot is on the waters of Yesod below there uh, of this card then is negative if you remember in the sixth card of the tarot indecision you find that not only the feet but the legs are below of that soul which is indecisive this, uh, I mean, her legs and feet are sunk in the waters because it's fallen. Because he has to decide how to, if he has to decide the mother or the whore. But here in this symbol, he's telling us, knowing that he is upside down, that sex is controlling his triangle. He wants to do the great work in order to invert the sign. And that's why he has his foot in heaven. To put foot, the foot in heaven means to transmute the sexual force. That's why in the graphic of the website, we put an inverted lamed because many times the Kabbalists state that the secret of the heart is between two lamets. But they don't explain how. But the way is here. The inverted lamed is inverted. So the yod, which is in heaven, when you invert it, you put the yod where it corresponds. And that yod corresponds to the night sphere in Yesod. Because in Yesod, the sexual force is where that yod is hidden, which is the power of Keter. When I say this, it's coming into my mind the book of Revelation that says that the angel of the Fatalib Avis, his name is. Abaddon. Abba in Hebrew is father. Adon is the Lord. Abaddon, the Lord, the father. Who is the Lord, the father, but Keter, the Yod. So that angel, or that force in this case, is placed in your sword. When we invert the letter Lamed. And if we extend that Yod, we extend it up to the spinal column, because remember that the spinal medulla is related with the letter Vav and has its strength from the Yod, which in this case is the letter Lamed. That is the beginning of putting the foot 
in heaven. Remember that there are two types of heaven, or types of waters, the waters above and the waters below. The waters of sex that we had to transmute them. And this is how we made the inverted lamed, which is necessary in order for us to control the cup. The cup, as we explained in the previous lecture, is related with the head, the crown. And remember that the crown, the calf, is controlled by Keter, and Keter is a yod. And remember that that yod, which is the center of the trinity, three unity, is the letter Shin, or the letter Aleph, because it's always pointing at three forces. So we here, here we have these three atoms in the head. The atom of Keter, the atom of Chochma, and the atom of Bina. These three atoms made the calf, the crown. So we have to rise the yod from Yesod through the spinal column in order to make the Vav and finally to place it in the calf which is the crown, in order to perform the inverted lamed. But this work, the rising of that force cannot be performed without the assistance of the fires of the heart. And this is something that we always have to emphasize. Lev, the heart. That's why we said the word. Lev may be in the art, a heart that understands knowledge. Or better to say, a heart that is controlled by Keter grants knowledge. But for that, we had to transmute the sexual force, because that's the very beginning. That we had to take the subtle from the gross, as Hermes Jesus says in his Emerald Tablet, to perform the miracle of one thing. Because this inverted Lamed had to be done or performed Seven times we have to rise or we have to perform that seven times in order to receive the crown. Do you see? That's why the word melech, melech in Hebrew means kin. Mem which is the lecture is going to be explained in the next lecture related with the waters. I am not going to dive into Mem right now because another speaker will do it. But Mem is there in Yasod. And from that comes Lamed. Mel -e Lamed. And it's ending with the letter Kaf. The Kaf, of course, is the crown of the kin. A Melech is a kin. Somebody that rises the fires of the waters of the only Melech. And that only Melech is scattered in the universe which is the very top of the tree of life, because he is the true king. Nobody can be a king if that one doesn't rise or the forces of that king into his own crown, into his own head. In other words, a fornicator cannot be a melech. That's why it is written that the true human being is a king 
or queen of nature that control the elements. And, and this Malak or kin is symbolized, of course, through all the kings of all religions. Remember that the wisdom of Solomon, the king, is coming from his Keter, his Malak, his own king inside. And this is precisely the symbol here, which is applied when you start performing the great work. Then you become a symbol of this man hanged by his foot. That which, in this way, you only touch the earth with your thoughts. So you have to understand you, that we have to develop objective reasoning by taking advantage of the fall, because that's precisely the point. Remember that it's written that we fell. Remember that we explain that we fell because it was necessary to develop and to know the powers of evil. Remember that in Genesis, with that, with the human being at that age, at that time, fell, the Elohim said, Behold, the man is like one of us, knowing good and evil. So therefore, in order for the human being that's why the Elohim closed the doors of Eden because if the man wants to be like the Elohim now he has to transmute the sexual energy the objective of the great work is to awake to know to acquire knowledge, but not only knowledge of the good. We have to acquire knowledge of the good and evil, because we have to be made into the image of God. God is complete, absolute. He is beyond good and evil, because he is on top of it. He knows good and he knows evil. That's an Elohim. It's impossible to conceive a God and Elohim without knowing good and evil. Because if that Elohim doesn't know Elo uh, good and evil, it's not an Elohim, it's not a God. And that's precisely the objective of nature. We have to build knowledge in order to become as Elohim. But for that, we have to exercise control in all the tree of life. A Malakim, or a Melek in this case, because Malakim is plural, but sometimes we apply it as singular in order to understand the meaning of the word. A Melek is somebody that controls all the forces, above and below, even Klippath. But, being a slave of Klippoth is not to be a king. And it's precisely what happened with this humanity. After the fall, when we, you know, that mistake that happened in Lemuria, when the Kundabafer organ was developed for the purpose of developing reasoning, because at that time, as you know, we, we always state that the five senses were not fully developed. And in order to develop reasoning, we had to develop the five senses. But, but if we get stagnant only in the five senses, the only reasoning that we develop is subjective reasoning. 
And what is subjective reasoning? Subjective reasoning is that reasoning related with Malkut below the three-dimensional world. But according to with, with the Arcanum 12, we have to develop 12 senses, not five, 12, in order to become a true human being. Those 12 senses, of course, are directly related with the five senses and the seven chakras. Seven chakras plus five senses, 12 senses. That of, as a fully developed melek, which is made into the image of God, knowing good and evil. Remember that the human being into the image of God is that man that knows good and evil and that controls good and evil. Is not a slave of evil, is not a slave of good. There are many demons in Klippath that are a slave of evil and they perform evil and utilize this knowledge for Klippathic purposes. There are other beings in heaven that still have ego, good egos, and they are slaves of the forces of good above. But a self-realized master is the one that went beyond that, controls good and controls evil. That's the walker of the middle path, the walker of the mist, the one that walks in the midst of the column, the tree of life. That walker scares demons and angels, which are still in process. That walker goes directly into the absolute. He wants to become a Paramartha Satya. He's a revolutionary. When a walker of the middle path enters into Nirvana, all the Nirvanis are scared because every step that this being performs is not in accordance with the law of Nirvana. And when it goes down into Klippoth, demons are scared because he is performing things which are not in accordance with the law of Klippoth. He's just following Keter, his inner being his inner kin, and he's performing revolution up and down because he's using the two Lameds, the Lamed below and the Lamed above. The Lamed above is that straight Lamed that goes into his heart because after the self-realization, or better to say, after this being rises, the seven lamets in the spinal column, he decides to take the direct path. And then he transforms himself into a bodhisattva and receives the strength of the other lamed, which is above the head. That lamed that touches as you see here, touches only his, uh, his head and his heart. The, the father Keter, the Yod, descends through Vav and enters into his head. That head is precisely what the gold skull, the stable or the manger of Bethlehem, where the God child is born. And the mixture of that fire that descends from heaven plus the fire that com came from hell, from Yesod, makes a bodhisattva, a revolutionary being that controls the two forces above and below, and that performs every work according to the, uh, to the fires of the heart. So that's the walker 
of the middle path, which is, I said, completely revolutionary and is making a great transformation. By performing that, he is, of course, associated with that Prometheus of Greek mythology that steals the fire from hell and from heaven in order to create inside of himself a true man. And that's why in Kabbalah, sometimes, symbolically speaking, the hand man is symbolized with Prometheus, the one that is passing a lot of sufferings because of the work that he is performing in himself. Remember that that Prometheus is Lucifer that descends into the night sphere and that advised to Adam and Eve to eat for the fruit in order to know good and evil and to become like Elohim. But after that, we have to rise that fire again in order to become like Elohim. And that's precisely the point that many initiates, many Kabbalists do not understand. They still are in Malkut, still in the fire for the physical enjoyment, for the physical or subjective reasoning, and transforming themselves into hierarchs of clip paths. In other words, into demons. Because when humanity reaches the level that we reach in the ancient Lemuria, when the Kundabafa organ was given to humanity, with the purpose of creating human beings into the image of Elohim, many of them came back from the fall and became gods. But most of them are fallen. And thinking that in order to acquire power in the earth, that's the goal of the self-realization. And they are identified with it. There are people that purposely develop psychic powers in order to control the earth. And we find that the power in Malkut is really money. That money is precisely that many esotericists want to acquire in order to conquer the world. Remember in the Middle Ages, many alchemists thought that the goal of alchemy was to transform physical lead into physical law, uh, gold. And of course, any alchemist can perform that easily. Anyone that self realizes himself can transform physical lead into physical gold, but that is not the goal of the self-realization. The one that acquires that power is not attached to it and doesn't do it. The true thing is that we have to transform the lead of the personality into the goal of the spirit. But many greedy initiates in the Middle Ages with working with alchemy in order to acquire the physical goal, to acquire the physical power, in order to conquer the world. Which is a very clipotic way of thinking. Because we have to acquire power on the earth through the self-realization, but not only in Malkut, but in all the Sephiroth. And uh, Kabbalists that acquire power on the earth through money are just stagnant and descend into clipot. That is what we call the Black Lodge, which controls in this day and age Malkut and all of clipot. They acquire power 
but they don't go beyond that. Because in order to go beyond Malkut, in the tree of life above, we have to renounce the riches of the earth and not to identify with the, with the power of the earth. Because that is illusory. It comes into my mind the power granted by Prometheus, which is uh, Judas Iscariot. It is written that Judas Iscariot hand also himself in order for the Christ to resurrect. And this is very profound that we had to comprehend. Because when we study this, the exoteric Christianity that does nothing about esotericism, they always condemn Judas. But we, the Gnostics, state that Judas is the most exalted of the apostles among the twelve. Because the sacrifice that Judas performed is more painful than the other sacrifices that the other masters or apostles performed 2,000 years ago. Why? Because the doctrine of Judas is precisely this to renounce the power of the earth in order to acquire power in heaven. And for that, we had to hand ourselves. We have to control our three brains. And remember that in the previous lecture, we stated that Judas is that apostle related with the sexual forces, with the sexual organs. In this card, the apostolate, we can synthesize in three persons, three symbols. The first one is Yeshua, the Savior, related with the heart. We cannot avoid naming here Yeshua, Jesus, because he's related with the atom nous in the heart. And Lamed is precisely the letter that points us to the heart, to that supreme master that knows, that understands knowledge. And the only one that understands knowledge, that is nous. And that nous is precisely represented by Jesus. Nuns means supreme mind, objective reasoning, and of course, the first apostle of that nuns atom is in the pineal gland, and that pineal gland is controlled by Peter. Peter, the apostle whose sacred name is Patar. And remember that the forces of Patar in the pineal gland are related with the crown. The pineal gland is that door that opens the doors into heaven. If we place the yod that belongs to Judas in the head. If we place the fires of Aries, Arie, the lion, which are precisely in the sex, in the head. But that cannot be performed without the help of the atom nous. So we have here the relationship of these three symbols. Peter in the pineal gland in the head, Judas in the sex, and the Lord, nous, Jesus in the heart, Yeshua. That's why the Judah or the fires of the Lion of Judah, as we or the speaker in the former lecture explains very clear, has to be controlled 
because these are the animalistic forces that we had to be uh, that had to be transmuted. Those animalistic forces are related to Judas. We propagate, we multiplicate ourselves in this physical world through Judas, through the sexual force that we find in Leo. The Lion of Judah is expressed through the sex. But who is the one that is going to control the fires of Leo? The one that wants to control those fires of sex had to do it through the, the fires of the heart, which are also the fires of Leo. And that's why Judas is the initiate in the path that understands that he has to hang himself. He has to kill himself. The doctrine of Judas is the annihilation of the ego, which is a process. And that's why the Arcanum number 12 is always pointed at Judas. In synthesis, Judah or Judas exists in every person. That's why you find here that below this man in the waters of life, you find a variation of the star of David. Three primary forces above and three primary forces below. That's pointing us very clear that the three primary forces, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the head, are controlled by three demons. Those three demons can be synthesized in the three brains. Judas in the sex, Judas in the heart, and Judas in the head. These are the three aspects of Judas, which are represented in the Gospels. The first is Judas Iscariot, in the sex that betrays the Lord. The second one is Judas in the head that condemns the Lord, which is Pilate. And the third is Judas in the heart, which is the evil priest, Caiaphas, that, that hates the Lord as well, in the heart. Or we will say, related with that venom, poison blood that circulates in the body. It is good to remember that the venom blood has to be purified in the process of serialization. Remember that the heart is that organ that moves the two bloods. The oxygenated blood, which is the purified blood, and the other blood, which is the poison, the venom blood. And of course, in that venom blood, which is directly related with the liver, is where we have those animal appetites that we have to control. In the liver, we have the inheritance that we call karma. If we investigate the liver, we discover that the liver is divided in five livers or five lobes. Each lob is a, a liver itself. It works independently. So the five uh, lobes make the whole liver, which is the biggest organ inside the physical body. And that is related with karma. It is written that if you want to have an astral projection and good experiences in the astral plane, clean your liver. Between parentheses, let me give you a medicine here very fast for the cleanse of the liver. Drink a half of lemon juice in a glass of 
a glass of lemon juice and a half glass of olive oil. You can mix it, but in the case when I do it, because I always do this once in a while, I drink first the olive oil, half glass, and in order to take that nausea, because it's really disgusting, but very good, I take the half of glass of lemon juice. And that take uh, from my mouth that sensation. But after that, I go and walk in order to digest, in order for my liver to absorb it. And this is how the, this uh, clean the liver and takes all the impurities. We have to clean the liver once in a while because this is where we have the impurities of our race, family, and all the impurities of our past lives. That is precisely the blood related with karma. The blood that circulates on the surface in the skin as a tempting serpent. Because the tempting serpent of Eden is related with that blood, the venom blood. And that always pushes to our animal behavior. But in the heart, we have the atom nous, which is pure, clean atom, connected directly to the Ein of or and Keter goes into the heart and acts on the direction of the Father in heaven in order to clean the blood with the oxygen of Aleph, with what we breathe. This is how the blood is purified. This is how Christ works in us. Especially when we are transmuting energy. Then we are putting a lot of solar atoms in our blood through our transmutation. And that's why the blood is changing. Not only uh, uh, the blood in the physical body, but also the consciousness, the soul changes. This is related with the sign of Lamed. And this is the work that we have to perform, which is the annihilation of the animal parts that works with the three brains. This is why we are inverted. The whole humanity is an inverted humanity, whose head is in Klippoth, because we are slaves of the forces of nature. The sexual force is controlled by these three traitors. Remember that those three traitors are the, are the outcome, of course, of the fall. That's why it is written that the day when you eat of that fruit, you will die. And it has a double meaning. You will die for the spirit. Because you will awake in the physical world. Your physical senses will be developed. And you will know good and evil. But you will be out of the spiritual world. But when the five senses become completely fully developed. When you are really not in contact with the spirit. Behold this humanity in this day and age. They have completely developed the five senses. And the subjective reasoning is fully developed. And everything that we find in the internet, school, colleges, universities, are related with the subjective reasoning, which are related with the five senses. But we, we want to develop objective reasoning, which is the real reasoning that we have to develop related with a true human being. Then we have to develop the seven chakras. And during the process, every one of the apostles of Christ had to be developed inside of us. It is a lecture there in the website already related with the 12 apostles. Remember that we have Thomas and Matthew in each side of the brain. 
remember that we have uh, Bartholomew in the pituitary gland. Remember that we have Philip in the thyroid gland. And related with the medulla oblongata, we have Simon the Canaanite, which is that apostle related with the mysteries of the wedding of Cana, which are related with the spinal column. So all of those 12 powers are hidden within every organ or physical organism, and also within the consciousness. And we have to develop that in order to become a true apostle. Remember that this card is showing us the apostolate, the which in we develop, the apostle. Apostle comes from the Greek word, apostolos, meaning someone is sent away and deliver a message. It comes into my mind, for instance, post office. There are many interpretations about what the post office is. But if you associate that word with apostolos, then you understand that even with the internet, when you write a post, you are writing a message. And that's precisely the meaning of apostolos. Somebody that delivers a message. But inside of us, we have the 12 apostles in potentiality, not in activity. Each one of these 12 parts of Nus that is represented by Jesus, each one has to deliver a message to the consciousness, to the being. Where the 12 apostles are developed, then you have the New Jerusalem the new heaven and the new earth. This has nothing to do with the planet itself, as many people think. They are, they are waiting for the promised land. But that is inside. The Arcanum number 12 is related with the 12 tribes of Israel, with the 12 apostles, with the 12 hours of Apollonius, the 12th power that we had to develop in synthesis the 12th arcanum is called the great work the whole self realization that we had to perform within and that's why when we point and we see the scar in the astral plane in dreams or in visions or when we consult the tarot, we have to understand that this card is showing us the sacrifice. This card is showing us sacrifice for humanity. That the first sacrifice for humanity begins inside, inside your own humanity, and then outside. Sacrifice means that you have to sacrifice, you had to perform many holocausts, the annihilation of many animal appetites within you. When we follow exactly the symbol of the teachings of the Elohim, we know that the sacrifice that we had to perform is inside. We have to sacrifice every single animal that we have within. And remember that that Leo, Judah, Judas, receives the influence of all the animal appetites. That's why the poor Judas, when Jesus of Nazareth 2,000 years ago told him, you are going to betray me, you are going to perform that role for me, Judas Iscariot said, my Lord, please give me the role of Peter. I want to do the role of Peter. And then Lord Jesus said, no, you are the, God, the one that is going to perform that role. So Judah said, well, that's a very hard thing. Because in order to perform that role, he has to represent 
the venom blood, and all the animal appetites, which is very heavy in each one of us. And he has to show us that we have to kill those animals. We have to annihilate those animal appetites. And in order to show us that we have to live, to give our life for the Lord. And that's why Judas betrayed the Lord. Many people in this past, when we know that we don't want to betray the Lord, but anyhow, we do it. Because when we are with the neighbor, with the family, with relatives, acquaintances, we always act as ego, as animals. And this is how we betray the Lord by feeding our animal appetites instead of the fires of the heart. And that's why Judas hanged himself. But this is not physical hanging. This is not physical dying. That is a process of psychology, a psychological killing, which means the annihilation of the ego through a process of initiation and meditation comprehension. There are many people here that study Kabbalah that think that in order to go into heaven, they have just to believe what is written in the Bible or any book. But that is not the way. We have to kill ourselves, psychologically speaking, and to kill ourselves means to annihilate all of those animal appetites that we have within. And that's precisely what Judas point uh, to us. The annihilation of the psychological ego to hang ourselves from the from that circle that you see, which is which is uh, sex. Which means that we have to apply the sexual force of Judas in order to annihilate the ego. That's why Nietzsche says, are you going to visit women? Don't forget your whip. But whip is willpower. Are you going to visit women? Don't forget yourself. Don't forget your willpower. Because remember Samson. He forgot himself, his willpower, and Delilah cut his hair. So that when we are with women, but in this case, with the sexual forces of procreation, that that is women, whether we are men or women, this is when we have to, to have with the whip. It's when we have to use the whip in order to control ourselves, in order to whip our animal appetites and to transmute them, to transmute the sexual force. We need comprehension. That hanging of Judas is very difficult. It's not easy. That's why people that do not understand anything about esotericism, they condemn Judas because they don't want to die. They want just to, to raise their arm and accepting Jesus as their Savior and going up to heaven without understanding that first they have to die. Because if Jesus died first in order to ascend to heaven, why we have, what don't we have to die first? We also have to die in order to ascend to heaven. But that psychological, that's a psychological death that we have to perform. We have to imitate Jesus. Read, for instance, the book of Thomas A. Kempis, The Imitation of Christ. We have to imitate that inside. We have to die on the cross. And that cross is sexual, 100%. That's the great work. First, we have to work with Peter. That's the first work. Peter is in the pina gland, which is the yod, the skater, that controls the water of Yasod through the inverted lamed, that we have to 
ascend or to rise seven times. And when we uh, reached that level, we had to annihilate Judas. And to annihilate the ego is the most difficult step. And that's why we had to study the Gospel of Judas. But Judas start betraying us and give us trouble from the very bottom of our self-realization, which is sex. And in their head as well. Because it's related with the animal behavior. We have to perform a transformation. And when that transformation is done, when Judas is completely dead, then we can talk about resurrection. Before that, let us not talk about resurrection. Unfortunately, many people interpret resurrection in their own way. And they believe that everybody is going to resurrect by believing in this or believing in that. And the truth is that resurrection is only applied to those that die psychologically. Because in order to resurrect, we have to die first. Nobody resurrects without dying first. The ego has to be annihilated. Then you, we can enter into the path of John, which is related with the word, with the verb, with the resurrection. The path of John is the most beautiful path, the path of the Apostle John. But how are we going to enter in that path if, we, if Judas is alive inside of us? Let me tell you, the Apostle Judas, the venerable master that came 2,000 years ago to represent that role in order to show us the way, is the most exalted among the twelve. But that's him. He's very blessed because among the twelve, he is the one that received the more damnations from the fanatics, ignoramuses, that do not know anything about Christian esotericism. Those that ignore that they perform a great work and that thanks to him, Jesus of Nazareth resurrected and performed the great work in this planet Earth. And still, there are a lot of people that condemn the master Judas Iscariot because he is showing us that we have to die and people do not want to die. Everybody point him as traitor. Meanwhile, they ignore that the real traitor of the Lord is inside of us because we have a traitor in the mind, a traitor in the heart, and a traitor in the sexual center. The fires of the heart is always inviting us to perform the great work. But if we recognize that we betray the fires of the heart through the three brains, and that we have to control the cross by performing the great work, then we have to hang ourselves like this man of the twelfth card. We have to put our foot up in heaven and to invoke the forces of Prometheus. Because Prometheus, Lucifer, is the one that uh, put us in trial. And that's why we are hanged there, as Prometheus, until we are liberated from karma. And that's a great work. Then, this is Star of David, that is inside the waters, comes out of it and is placed in the finger and becomes a ring. In that melech that control the forces of nature, that perform the great work. Do you understand? Are you following me? 
Do you comprehend the sacrifice that this man is doing or hanging there between columns, Jack King and Boaz? You find that uh, each column has nine layers or nine levels, which is related to the nine sphere. And of course, uh, other Kabbalists state that this man is hand from the letter Tav. Which symbolizes that it's completely self-realized. Thanks to the working of the triangle of, with the cross. If you observe... Each column, as I said, has nine levels. And that points us uh, to the ninth sphere that we have to perform the work in the ninth sphere between the woman and the man because are the two columns, Jaquin and Boaz, the man and the woman. The nine Yesod, or the, the symbol of Yesod, which is the nine, in each one of them. And this performing the waters. Remember that we talk in the sixth arcanum of the tarot about the symbol of the star of David that is related with 12 forces. Six related or six points which are masculine and the six entrances or vortices that are related with the feminine forces which in total makes 12 six masculine and six feminine. That's why the start of devil is related with 12 rays, which are related with the 12 arcanum and the work that we have to perform. So the letter Lamed has to be performing as twice. First the inverted one in order to receive the crown. Then the right one in order to receive the forces or the incarnation of the Messiah in each one of us. In order to acquire the self-realization. The sacrifices that we are talking here are performed in every sephira. In the beginning when we start working in this path, we have to die in Malkut. The ego has to be annihilated in Malkut, which is related with the five senses. Remember that we have to control desire. And desire <coughs> is control when we uh, control the impression that we receive to the five senses. In the time of Lemuria, with the falling of humanity, it is stated that when the Kundabafer was developed, it was with the purpose of, uh, for humanity to become identified with nature. In other words, the soul at that time was not really concerned with matter or the three-dimensional world. But why the five senses were developed little by little, then those impressions were entering into the consciousness and then we were identified. We were becoming identified with the physical world. And this is why, this is how we created desire. With the identification uh, with nature. When the commission at that time of Lemuria came back in order to take the Kundabafer organ with the objective of uh, humanity to develop objective reason, then it was too late because humanity was uh, very much identified with the physical world and continued feeling desire. 
And until now, uh, this humanity is performing the same thing. They are so identified with this physical world. They think, uh, humanity think that by acquiring wealth in this physical world, everything is done. They forget that in this uh, life, we had to perform a great equation. And that great equation is divided in two parts. First, the first part of the equation is to acquire a house, cloth, and food in order to survive. But many people identify too much with it in acquiring a lot of wealth, which is exaggerated. And they forget about the second part of the equation, which is related with the development of the internal man, the eternal human being. And for that, we had to control the forces of nature of the physical world. And then we have to control all of the forces of the tree of life above through the self-realization of the being. Malkut is related with the 96 laws that we had to control by meditating and comprehending the impressions of this physical world. And little by little, we enter into the other layers with the other levels of the mind. Remember that the Master Samael on the earth talks very extensive about the 49 levels of the mind. We had to understand that. We had to comprehend that in order to enter into the deepest levels of the mind, we have to awaken Malkut first and to go deep because the other senses are necessary to be developed in order to enter into the subconsciousness of nature, into other levels which are not physical. We have to awaken, awake, and by awakening the consciousness, we are going to see the other parts of the consciousness are bottled up into the ego. And that's why it is written, the Master Samael explained that in the Three Mountains. When you reach the level of Malkut, in the second mountain, then you enter into that second mountain, which is related with the resurrection or the work that we had to perform until reaching Keter. And that's why we are reaching the different ages of the consciousness. Remember that uh, the Master says that the tree of life is reaching us different ages. When the initiate reaches the level of Malkut, he is 100 years old. But that is related with the consciousness, not with the physical body. When he enters into the mysteries of Yesod, he is 200 years old. So when we reach Keter, we are a thousand years old. And this is how it is explained in esotericism, the different ages of the human being. And we are crying that uh, different ages to the annihilation of the different psychological aggregates. So when you reach the, the age of a thousand years old, you are in the kingdom of Keter without ego. Then you understand. Because if you go into the Bible, it is written that Noah entered into the ark at the age of 600 years. We are not denying here that in the past people develop or live more physically speaking, but here we are talking about esoteric matters. Esoteric age, which is related with the different uh, steps and sacrifices that we had to perform. Because in every step in the tree of life related with the nine layers, the initiate enters into Nirvana. Levels of Nirvana. And he has to renounce those kingdoms in order to go into another level. He has to die 
because there are many egos related with good in those steps. Egos that you don't see, that we need to see. But we can see only if we awake. There are many Gnostic studies when they start, they are so identified with the 49 levels that they make their life complicated. And we always advise them, relax. Annihilate your ego related with this physical plane because those are the only egos that you can see because you are not awakened in the internal planes. And if by chance you awake, and you capture some egos related with those planes, then meditate on them. But right now, worry only about the physical plane. Because you cannot put in the second level if you are not standing in the first level. The people want to jump to get there just by reading a book. People want to annihilate the egos of related with the higher levels just because they memorized or they read the revolutionary psychology book. We have to understand that we have to start from the bottom. Performing sacrifices from the bottom. Judas is multifaceted. Only those that annihilate the egos in all the levels perform self-realization. Only those that perform the great work. That's, that's why many initially decide to go into the spiral path. Because they, they see that it's too much. And they want to rest a little bit. And they take their spiral path in order to perform this annihilation through millions of Mahamambantanas. But when they do that, they don't receive help because the straight lamed that comes into the king comes only if he takes the direct path. If you help others, if you sacrifice for others, if you don't want to share the knowledge with others, then the Lord doesn't come into you. The Messiah doesn't incarnate if you are a selfish one. So that's precisely what the card uh, symbolizes here. The great work. But for the great work, we have to incarnate the Messiah. Nobody can perform the great work. Nobody can perform the 12th card of the tarot if he doesn't incarnate the Messiah. But in order to incarnate the Messiah, we have to perform the inverted lamed seven times. If you read there for uh, that uh, paragraph that is written at the very bottom of the website in the 12th Arcanum, you find there that it's written that many people call themselves apostles and they are not because they are liars. So people that claim that they are apostles, but they are not. Because how these people are going to claim that they are apostles where they don't even transmute their sexual energy. That is statement that is written there in the Church of Revelation is related with the Church of Ephesus. And the Church of Ephesus is related with the Chakra Muladhara that is located between the Anus and the Gentiles. So the Chakra Muladhara is the Church of Ephesus. And from that church of Ephesus, here were the solar fires of Arie the Leo rises in the spinal column in order to perform the inverted lamed and going to receive the crown. And this is how we become kings, Melek, which will receive Chochma through the other lamed. But if our foot is not in heaven, if our yod is not transmuted, then we are fornicators. And fornicators don't receive any crown. Fornicators don't receive the Messiah. Fornicators don't receive Christ. Because Christ only enters in those which are in chastity. 
So our foot, our yod, has to be up in heaven. And that's a true apostle. That's the beginning of the apostle. To be in chastity. But if we are not doing that, we are liars. With that, we are thinking that with subjective reasoning, we are going to reach self-realization or to achieve salvation. And that's not possible. Because subjective reasoning in the Bible is related with Cain. Remember that when Adam and Eve fell into fornication, they begat their first son. It is written that Adam knew Eve and begat Cain. But Cain is the outcome of orgasm. Cain is the outcome of the spasm, the animal fornication, which only grants subjective reasoning and not objective reasoning. So for a man to know a woman, it does it through the sexual act. Or for the woman to know a man, she has to do it through the sexual act. And this is how the Bible explains it in Genesis. When Eve accepted the tree of good and evil, which means that, he accept, uh, that she accepted orgasm, and Adam, the brain, took the outcome of that orgasm of the sexual organs, subjective reasoning was developed. And that subjective reasoning is related with the five senses. Is what the Bible, the Bible called Cain. This is why it explained that Cain was working with the earth. To work with the earth means to work with Malkut. To war with the five senses. So remember, in order to be a true apostle, you have to put your jaw in heaven, which means the sexual force controlled by the Holy Cross. Or by the other symbol, which is the Star of David, which is in the very bottom of the 12th Arcanum. That Star of David, or a variation of the Star of David that is in the very bottom of the 12th Arcanum, in that symbol, should rise. And when that rises, then goes through the spinal column. But remember that the style of David is the union of two triangles, the man and the woman. So the style of David is a sexual symbol because the upper triangle symbolizes the two uh, testicles of the man and the phallus. And the lower triangle symbolizes the two ovaries of the woman and her yoni. So when we unite these two triangles, we enter into the mysteries of the stone of Yesod. And from the stone of Yesod rises the forces of Yod through the spinal column, through the Vav, the spinal medulla, and reach the calf, which is the head. And this is how the inverted Lamed is performed. And this fires rises or rise only with the merits of the fires of the heart. And that's why the fires of the heart are the ones that control the fires of sex. And when we perform this seven times, then we reach the level of human being, a level of melech. And this Melek, if he takes the direct path or the path of the mist, which is sacrificed for humanity, as this card is showing us, then he receives the Messiah in his heart. The birth 
of the child God in his heart. And then he can follow the path of the Bodhisattva in which the Messiah, Christ, is appearing in his body, mind, soul, and spirit little by little in the measure that Judas is annihilated because we had to start annihilating Judas little by little. We begin by transmuting the sexual energy, that is to deny ourselves, to deny the fires of Leo, which are related with the venom blood, related with our animal appetites. And this is how that yod rises and the foot of this man, that is hand from heaven, is placed in heaven. Is placed or depends on the cross, which is in the middle of the circle of this card. Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,